Hey gang, Mark Holmes here. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You know, Cowboy fans are so ready to just say off with their head, get rid of him, he's a bum, and everything else. I'm going to say that um, we're going to look back on losing Dan Quinn. People seem to not remember how pathetic and putrid our defense was just in 2020. And without major major work in bringing in personnel on this defense. The biggest player that they brought in um, that wasn't a drafted player was Stephon Gilmore. And that's a fact. We got lucky in getting Micah Parsons, but for the most part, the people that the Dallas Cowboys had here getting uh, a Dante Fowler who people thought was done. Oh, man, that guy's a bum. There's not a single person out there that said, yes, we got Dante Fowler. They didn't. When you think about Dorrance Armstrong, when Stephen Jones said he's right up there in production with Randy Gregory, um, we all laughed at that. Deron Bland? Wasn't he a fifth-round draft pick? Who thought that guy was going to be good? And Diggs... After his rookie season, they said, eh, he's okay. Linebacker-wise, we had holdovers of Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith. And Leighton Van Der Esch was a good one, but that's all we had. Defensive line, we had guys like Tristan Hill, you know, Novell Gallimore. Um, John Ridgeway was one I wish we had kept, and now he's reunited with Dan Quinn. And I hate to see Dan Quinn on the other side of the field. And I think that this is going to make those games against the Commanders more like it used to be back in the day. I want to listen to a little bit of Dan Quinn, and I love listening to Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is definitely a motivator and a guy who definitely gets the most out of the players, which is key because I still look at it and say, Demarcus Lawrence is a good player, but he's in the twilight of his career. Micah Parsons is a stud. But for the most part, he took guys that were so-so guys, journeymen, and so forth, and literally got the most out of them. Washington, they got a hell of a coach. To say playing against us is really hard. And the attitude, the speed, the effort, the ball hawking, the tackling, the finishing of blocks, the explosive plays, that's how you know we create a nightmare to go against. And we're going to work our ass off to do that. But as far as play calling, um, I'll be involved with it. But those guys will call the game. But the essence of this job as a head coach isn't just to be on one side. It's to tie this. everything together. And that's when I'm at my best. And so that's what I'll do. And uh, for you and Adam, obviously, quarterback is such an important position in this sport. You guys may have the opportunity to draft one in the first round, and Sam Howell is here as well. How much of your conversations were about what happens at quarterback and how, how important is Cliff to whatever it is you guys uh, plan to do with that position? Yeah, I'll take that one if you okay. want. Yeah, yeah we, really, we just got started, Ben, so we haven't even had discussions yet as the staff with that. Uh, obviously, it's the most important position on the field, and we're going to put a lot of time into it, but as of now, we haven't even gotten started on that one. Sam Fortier with the Washington Post. Welcome to DC. Um, why Cliff and Joe? Well, I think um, I'll take you back a bit. And so, when you're getting prepared for this, you don't you're not sure what job you're going to get. You know, you're you're thinking, okay, this you know opportunity, this opportunity. So it's a little different than being on their side where they were going to select. Where on the coaching side, you were going to see where would be a good fit, and the coaching staff would be the fit irregardless of where you went. Okay, so for me, selecting a place that I would be able to potentially coach didn't have to do with did they have a quarterback or cap space or any of that. It was ownership and general manager and fan base and what you could create together because cap space changes. I was looking to say, how could we do something long term to kick ass for a long time and continue to play well, not just because they had won this or won that. So. Cliff has always been somebody um, that I've kept up with. Um, years ago, we both coached in college, and uh, we first met each other at a, an award show and just kind of hit it off on that time and then competed against each other. I certainly followed his career you know, through his time at Tech and then into Arizona and competing. And so in the same way of why I wanted to hire Kyle years ago, like he was hard to go against. 
he would stretch the field horizontally and vertically and going against Cliff, those same feelings you had. This is going to be tough. Matchups, formation, <coughs> speed, shots down the field, aggressiveness, boldness to go. And so as a coach, you were writing down some names if this is something in your future that said, if I get that shot, this is somebody I would want to talk to. And so that's where the, the start came from him. Um, we're really pumped that he's going to be a part of it. Obviously, I know people talk about you know his acumen with quarterbacks, and that's proven. But he's also an excellent coach. He's not just you know a guy that's going to be with the quarterbacks the whole time. So I want to make sure I'm clear on that. And then with Joe, um, it's a little different because I had a chance to be shoulder to shoulder with him, you know, over the last three years in Dallas. And through that time, I've just seen the detail, the connection, um, the play style, you know. And so to play good defense, you better be a good tackling team. And you better know how to take the ball away. And those are two right things Joe and, and the units that he was charged with have been excellent at. And uh, I think over the last three years, you know, with, with Joe there, the team had been, you know, at the top of the league in terms of takeaways and defensive touchdowns. Yeah. If you want to play good defense, you better tackle because there's so, I'm not talking about in the A gap, I'm talking about there's space plays that happen in today's NFL. And so in that space, how do you have the technique to go and make tackles where, uh, guys like Cliff and Kyle and everybody else want to create all this space to say, you know, make it hard. So you better be a good tackling team and you better know how to get the ball away and show good disguises, you know, to make the quarterback have to read the coverages after he has the ball in his hand. And Joe's been exceptional at that through his career. So that's why when those moments come and you want to nail it, uh, you do it and you go for it. And so I appreciate Josh and Adam when the moment came to go be uh, aggressive, um, we were going to go do that. Can you take us through the timeline, the emotions of interviewing for this job? And then what was the moment like when you got the call? Um, yeah, I'd be glad to do that. It's, uh, you know, you, nobody's ringing. All right, you put your phone back. Is anybody calling? No, they're not calling. So, <laughs> you know, like, is my phone working? Yes, it's still working. <laughs> so I so uh, wanted uh, this moment. And so, like, Ugh! you know, you're just that. And so, Stacey and I took a ride, you know, out in the car, and we don't, we don't ever do that. She's like, come on, let's get out of the house. And so we just, you know, went around. And, and then uh, Thursday night, I think, or whatever it was, a couple nights ago, um, Adam had called and extended it out. And so then you have to kind of wait overnight to, um, to get there, and so you don't sleep much that night. And then it probably doesn't fully hit you until you get your feet on the ground here. And so that was what was really cool about last night. Um, we were not expecting to see Adam and his wife, Jen, there on the tarmac. And so, like, that's brotherhood. That's showing, like, I'm in with you. And that was awesome. So you want the call. You're ready for the call. But it becomes more real when you get there because, you know, you want it. You're there. But when you get it, you're pumped to say, let's, let's go do this. And so Stacy's uh, been with me the whole time through it. And so it's all the good, the bad, and everything in between. And so this football life we live together is fun. But um, it's moments like that that uh, it's hard to stay present and be where your feet are, you know, in those moments. But it's also one of the really cool times to say, man, you get to go prove it and, and kick ass and have fun doing it. And so that's what we plan on doing. Sam, I'll tell you, too, he, he didn't answer when I called. He's playing hard to get. So. <laughs> it made me wait so long. I'm not answering the first ring. <laughs> Got to make him feel a little some way, you know. <laughs> I'm Barry Sferluga from the. I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, for me, this is sad, man, because uh, I really and truly liked Dan Quinn. I congratulate him on getting the job. I can't wish him well because wishing him well hurts my Cowboys. And I'm gonna dare say that the Cowboys. You know, we have been pretty good in our division. Our problem has been in the playoffs. But I'm going to say things have just gotten harder for our Cowboys when it comes to playing in our division. I can definitely see the commanders um, being a lot better. The thing I always notice about Dan Quinn being at tra training camp is how much of a hands-on guy he is, how much energy he brought out to the field. He truly looked like a man that enjoyed being the teacher of men. I can't say that I've seen that with Jason Garrett's as much. I can't say that I've seen that with like seeing Ron Rivera on the sidelines of things or even Mike McCarthy. But this is a guy that I believe is actually really, really good. And the Cowboys are truly going to miss him. Good luck, Dan Quinn. 
Just not when you're playing the Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and yeah, this is a rough Monday as we go through <sighs> trying to find a deep.